Sports. It is the Pete Souza Show. We are sponsored by Daniel Stark Injury Lawyers. Uh, we did some work with them yet. Ugh. Cam is now, dude, what are you for? Okay. He's having some snacks. What was, hold on. Cam Stewart is off camera. We're not going to bring him on camera because he's eating and it's gross. And now his little grubby hands are going into a Ziploc bag with goldfish. Yeah. They're uh, whales. They're whales. Cam Stewart now, watch him dip in. Using his left hand, he's got that forefinger and the index finger. Wow. Goes right into his mouth, just smothering the goldfish. So, Cam, what was what was for lunch? Like that, what was for lunch? Cam, Cam, stop. What was for lunch? Peanut butter, getting... peanut, butter peanut butter with nothing else? What do you mean? And bread. I don't know. Peanut butter and bread? Yeah. Okay. Nothing else. That qualifies oh, as a peanut butter okay. sandwich. Dude. This kid's like a toddler. Seriously. You never had a peanut butter sandwich? You fucking <laughs> I mean, they were, I guess, desperate, but I never, I certainly never placed a peanut butter sandwich in a Ziploc bag and thought, can't wait till later. No. At least he didn't That's put it in his a regular thing. He didn't put it in his hat or his, or his sock. Peanut butter, honey, peanut butter, jelly. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I can't see. Peanut butter and honey. I can see. Oh. Where, I can see the where the peanut butter needs a little lubrication. All right, Mike. This let's get back to. Uh, we're going to do birthdays. Then we're going to hear yeah, from my mom. Yeah, let's do some birthdays. Yeah, I, I, I want to hear this. We were not going to do this, but Mike brought it up, and, and now all of a sudden I'm like, all right, let's check in I'm with Mike. time. Yeah, uh, Flea. Okay, Flea is 62 years old today. Flea, by the way. Yeah. Huge, huge Captain basketball fan. Oh, his name's not Flea. Huge basketball <laughs> fan. Um, his name's Tick. When, I'll tell you, when I work for the Hornets. Uh, he wanted Adam Morrison. There was a show at Char in Charlotte. He would loved Adam Morrison, the guy with the mustache who went to Gonzaga. Adam was on the, the the Bobcats. He was sort of a recluse. He liked to play video games and keep to himself. He were un really didn't even work that hard. People thought he was going to, but he didn't. Mm -hmm. And Flea wanted Adam Morrison at – there was a, con a concert at Time Warner Center, and he wanted Flea uh, – Flea wanted Adam Morrison to come. And Sean May and Raymond Felton went, and Adam Morrison wouldn't go. Mm. And Flea was like, the next day he wrote about it in his blog. And he was like, I was really surprised that Adam Morrison didn't come. I wanted him to come. Flea was low-key hurt that yeah. Adam Morrison didn't go to the show. Uh, second on this list, uh, but uh, number one in your hearts, uh, Angela Lansbury. Oh, she's still alive? No, she did. Okay, Murder, what She Wrote, she dude. <laughs> Coming up next on Murder, She Wrote. Tim Robbins. Oh, I, I never, alive. never a huge. He is fan. alive and sixty-six years old. His best work was Clue. Um, mm, I don't know about that. I like the uh, prod sucker, Huxy, Hux, Proxer, Suxy, whatever that is. Tim Robbins. Hold on, dude. Hold on. Shawshank Redemption. Shawshank Redemption. Oh, my there bad. Go. Bull Durham. I was getting. I got Bull him mixed Durham up. too. Bull yeah. Durham for sure. The That's guy's easy. had some. He's had some good. I got stuff. him mixed up with the English actor from Clue. And then the, no. Sorry. The last, the last Tim Curry, Tim Curry, yeah. The last, uh, the last one on this list also dead. Suzanne Summers. Oh, yeah. God bless us and save she us. She invented the uh, open your thighs, close your thighs. It's called the thigh master. Oh. Uh, Suzanne Summers passing away yeah. and, and dying. That's sad. Passed uh, away and dying. Mm -hmm. But to me, that is that defines like mortality because if there was someone in my youth outside of like an outstanding athlete, like maybe a Pete Rose or a Mike Schmidt, like there was yeah. Suzanne Summers who I thought this person will never die. Well, I would say the second one on that list is Farrah Fawcett also. Yes. She's that same yeah. type of person where you're like, wait, they died. Yeah. You know I mean? They're not supposed to. Yeah. Angel your, Lansbury. I get it. Your favorite Charlie's angel. My Michael. favorite Charlie's yeah. angel. Um, who was the one they brought on after she left? I don't know that one. <laughs> All right, how about you? Oh, what fucking Drew Barrymore? Come on, dude. You can't. You can't, you can't, can't do that. Movies. Lucy you can't Liu. You could actually, if you want to no, say that, that's fine. No. I would take. I like Lucy Liu actually. No, not not canon. Jacqueline Smith. That's an easy one, dude. She's still looking very very good. And Jacqueline Smith collection available only at. Kmart. Jacqueline Smith is how old? Um, 78. All right. When you want to talk about beautiful older women, yeah. it's impossible not to bring my mom into the conversation. Sure. And before this show, now my mom 
has been shying away from opportunities on the show. Unfortunately, she had a stroke a, a few years ago. So, you know, she doesn't have the timber that she would want to have. You see her in person and she looks picture perfect. I mean, you can go on my social media. You see my mom. She looks like she's 55, 60. But so please um, take into account that her voice isn't up to full throttle because as long as we preface her appearances by saying that, I think she might continue to at least take my phone calls when she knows I'm recording. We did it today. I told her, Mom, you're going to be on the show. She then said she was hanging up, but she seems like she allowed it. Allowed it. So I had a couple questions I wanted to ask her yesterday when I was driving home. She gave me feedback on the show. So let's take a look at some of that feedback and take a look into the Philadelphia sports scene. Mike, go ahead. Yes. Okay, good. Now, we were talking yesterday a little bit about what did you what did you think about how I conducted myself, like some of my language and stuff uh, on the show? Oh. Huh? You kept saying anyways instead of anyway. Okay. You need to watch your grammar. All right, so say You're anyway. very good. You're normally very good. You really are. You're exceptionally good. And I hope nobody writes to you about that comment about Sirianni today. Oh, you, my mom. But, I mean, don't you think he's a joke? He's a clown. I just think you should compare him to. No, it was from the movie Heat. Like, the guy picks up a kid to shield himself from the villains. I mean, that's. I, I, I And look, Nick, that was a clown behavior he exhibited. Like, what if that was Michael? And he was the coach. I did watch it. I, I did watch it. I did watch it. And three kids with him. And what? He had all three of his children with him. Yeah, he did. That was. Uh, do you think Dad would ever done that? Are you kidding me? He never took us anywhere. <laughs> and that's not true. <laughs> Mom, did that you think is not what? True. This is a good question, though. What would you think of Michael if he was the head coach <laughs> of the Eagles, and then after the game? Fans that had been talking to him negatively, he wandered over there and started to yell at him. You you would tell him he was acting like an ass. He was. Thank you. He was. I admit it. I admit that. At first, that's what I thought, but I just commented. And then I went to see the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, my voice, my voice is not great. Just, you know, he went to see, uh, I went to see the clip and then I changed my mind. All right. Are we are we doing Borgata uh October twenty fifth? Yes, and did you see what I sent you about siblings grief? I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Uh -huh. I, I I will look at it, yes. Um, it's excellent and it says what you and Michael do. All right. You I'll listen, I'll listen hit to that. for both of you. We're trying to keep it happy right now. I'm recording this for our show today. Oh, don't do you have me on? I'm I'm hanging up. Goodbye, mom. Don't hang up, mom. Mom. What? Uh, so the Borgata on the 25th. Uh, I just got to wait to see if I if I get a football game, I won't be able to do it. But otherwise, Christy and I are going to go. And we're going to. I told her we're going to go Borgata. Okay. All right. I love you very much, mom. Do you have me on air? Yeah, you sound great, by the way. Goodbye. Bye. She is a national treasure. She is Terry Souza. Boy, uh, I, I, I hope we can continue to get her back. I may get a cease and desist after that. Your mom is fantastic. Fantastic. And she's a compelling guest. Yeah. I remember years ago I asked her, um, I said, Mom, what is the best part about getting older? And she said, you really stop giving a shit. And that makes for a great, a great that guest. that the damn truth. Mike, throw me that pumpkin. Yeah. Real quick. My mom used to do the best job of decorating and this is i brought this pumpkin in here mike drew on it it was just a pin yeah yeah but it is a thanksgiving style deal is it yeah i mean thanksgiving sorry Halloween. well on one side it's thanksgiving on the other side it's halloween yeah there it you is. Go. Yeah. um all right so yesterday we're in the aftermath of and i spoke about this for a little bit this is something i really wanted to touch on was the jerry jones situation with the cowboys now Everyone in the aftermath of that situation, media pundits, most people, they all said to a man or a woman that Jerry Jones was out of line 
by coming at those two radio hosts or three radio hosts, right? They felt like Jerry Jones uh, basically was using his power to threaten their livelihood. And if you go back and you listen to the full conversation, I'm going to say it one more time, okay? If you listen to the, the total conversation and you take it into context, this is a radio show who already before had asked Jerry Jones, and I talked about this a little bit earlier with Cam, but I want to bring it up here. They had already asked Jerry Jones in the past about, hey, did you think about making more changes to the rosters during the offseason, right? This is a question that has been asked of him time and time again. We know the answer. He didn't make any moves, right? So what did he do? He's an 82-year-old man. He just turned 82. By the way, is he single? My mom's single. Is Jerry Jones single? No. No, okay. No, he's got that wife that loves art. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, he's the man. Um, and we're happy he's married. I was just curious. Uh, so he obviously bit back, right? And and another thing that we discussed when I was talking with Cam that I wanted to bring up was, you know, those guys, the radio hosts, they're in Dallas. They're on in the morning. They're obviously very successful and good at what they do. However, in that situation, regardless of who the subject is, when they start to threaten your job and threaten your livelihood, if you're on the air at that time and you're pitching a perfect game, right, career-wise in the moment during that show, and I'm not saying I would be able to do this because it's a jarring situation, but if you step up and you say, hey, Jerry, all due respect, your team has gotten outscored 75 to nothing in your last four home games in the first half. Like, it's time to really start addressing this stuff. The fans want to know. They didn't do that. They were sort of like, oh, hey, Jerry, we're just kind of asking. I think if you take a hard line there, and, and and honestly, not calling Jerry Jones a bully, but we know what happens when you hit the bully in the mouth. I've always, I'm in the middle of a Vern Lundquist book, and he talks about when he was starting off in Austin, he ran a story about Texas Longhorn football players who were at a hotel, that uh, they were drinking, and they were running around, um, knocking on doors of the hotel. And and one person opened a door and, and the Texas football player punched him in the face. Now, this is like the late 60s. So just so you know, athletes have been running wild since the beginning of time doing crazy bonehead stuff. But uh, Vern was on the air in Austin. He was the lead sports guy at a station. I forget what. And he ran that story. So he leads the news uh, or the sports cast with the story about these Texas football players who are acting acting like outlaws on on this occasion. Uh, he runs their names and everything. Daryl K. Royal. So Vern Lundquist at the time, who was from Austin, he went to Texas Lutheran. Now he's back in town living in Austin, uh, living with his folks. It's like his first or second job out of college. And Daryl K. Royal calls his house, right? And – Vern answers the phone and it, there, there's a woman on the phone and she's like, Vern Lundquist? And he's like, yeah. She's like, hang on one second. Like, coach will be with you. And, and Vern's like, yo, what is the deal? And he said, Daryl K. Royal just went up one side of him and down the other, taking him to task, telling him why he shouldn't have run this story, why it wasn't news, why it was the wrong thing to do. And Vern says, may have accused him of being a communist. You know, like it was the whole kitchen sink was thrown at him. And what Vern said was, I stood my ground. I told him I disagreed with him. I told him he was wrong. I told him it was newsworthy. These are figures who are public. These are public figures who are out there breaking the law. It is news, right? People know who these guys are. And, you know, in the moment, Daryl Royal was extremely pissed. Uh, and, you know, obviously he went back and forth with Vern, like the conversation started. But, a few days later, maybe a week later, uh, and after the uh, – maybe it was a couple months later, the, the, the case gets resolved. Um, there's a finality to it, whether the guys – I mean, I don't think they went to prison, but they certainly probably had to pay a fine and got in trouble. But they were found guilty of whatever they did. Uh, Coach Royal called Vern, and he apologized. And he said, hey, in the moment, I was fired up. I got that wrong. And Vern says, you know, from that point forward – I always had Coach Royal's respect. Like, I knew in my heart of hearts that what I did was the right thing. And, you know, you get this monster of a figure 
um, calling you and maybe browbeating you a little bit, uh, staying your ground is the most important thing you can do in a situation like that. So you go back to yesterday when those guys from 105.3 The Fan in Dallas were in the line of fire with Jerry Jones. Again, we're going back. Hindsight is twenty twenty. But if you're pitching a perfect game at the time, you stand your ground. And you don't necessarily let them have it, but you draw a line in the sand. I remember – this is a great TV news story, and then we'll get to break. Uh, during COVID, I was gifted the opportunity – I interviewed the governor because because Governor Abbott was he understood that Texans need to hear, hear needed to hear from him. So he was constantly making public appearances on local TV stations, talking to jamokes like me. Uh, and at the time, our noon anchor, Julie Hayes, uh, was working from home. So Julie's working at home like a lot of people were doing during COVID, especially folks who are immunocompromised. So I anchored the morning show and the noon show. And it was awesome. I was loving it because there was so much going on. You really felt like you were purposeful. So I interviewed the governor the first couple of times. And boy, I mean, he's a pro as far as, you know, the ability to filibuster or to not answer a question. So I came to my desk after one of the times where I had spoken with him and maybe sparred with him a little bit. And I asked our new our, our assistant news director, this guy by the name of Rick Bradfield. And Rick was a legend in the news industry, an absolute legend. And I said, Rick, I'm asking, he, he, he taught at Baylor. Did he teach you, Cam? No, he didn't. He taught at Baylor. That's why he ended up, that's why Cam ended up like this. Uh, Rick taught at Baylor. He was the news director at KWTX when everything went down with David Koresh. Um, and he just did an amazing job with that. He actually was from Denver. The guy could have lived wherever he wanted. But he fell in love here and his wife passed away um, from cancer. But then he fell in love with Cassie, who still teaches at Baylor. And she's a total legend there. Um, but I asked, I said, Rick, what the hell do I do when um, when this guy starts to filibuster and he doesn't want to answer a question? You know, when he does a political game, he said, you jump right in there. And Rick was not a man of many words. You say, Governor, I appreciate it. But for the sake of time, I have to ask you this one more time. It seems like you're putting a loophole in there for folks where they'll be able to celebrate Easter Mass when you're also saying that everyone should be indoors and social distancing. And it worked. And I got I got an answer. And, you know, like it was that type of integrity, you know, that I would take from a guy like Rick and kind of let him speak through me in big moments like that, that I think really, I mean, I talk, I, I was, it's unbelievable. I got to interview the governor several on several occasions. And I felt like, you know, he had a healthy respect for me, um, which was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, it was from a guy like Rick kind of show me what to do. So a little bit of journalism 101. Um, I'm always the one on the learning end, but, uh, yeah, a little experience too. We'll come back with Cabaret Stewart here on the Pete Souza show powered by the rogue media network. It's the Pete Souza show sports sports. Pete. 